So my entire duck hunting career, I've been hunting pretty much 100% public land. Uh, started out in Mississippi hunting public land and ventured over into Arkansas and kind of saw, saw the daylight, so to speak, uh, chasing mallards in the timber there and fell in love with it. And we've been hunting it pretty much exclusively for the past 10 years. A couple years ago, some stuff started transpiring with the game and fish as far as limiting out-of-staters. Uh, we kind of saw the writing on the wall and we'd been looking for a place to call our own. Uh, we went and looked at some private places in Arkansas and Mississippi and stumbled up on this place uh, up here on the river uh, and bought it last year. It's about a 1,200 acre island. The southeast corner of it is a break, what we refer to a break in Mississippi. The, the gentleman that had it before us, he was a big deer hunter. So for the past eight years, it really only got duck hunted when the river got up. So, you know, our vision uh, was to try to make that a break that held water year in and year out. So uh, that's where the lost break name comes from. It's just kind of, it's a break that's been there, but just kind of been lost as far as duck hunting is concerned. Uh, Brooks took me on my first timber duck hunt. I was always a big duck hunter, um, but Brooks invited me years ago to go to the White River. Um, from the time he landed the first group of mallards in the trees, I fell in love with the sport. After that, all I could think about was how to learn more about the sport. Uh, so hunting around Brooks and Murray and our group, it's been a lot of fun. One thing we always wanted to have was our own place, um, not to fight the crowds of public land. Um, and we, we looked and we looked and we looked for years. Me and Brooks came up here and looked for this place and we walked through. I'll never forget it. The water was just getting on the island the day we're here in February. It was about 50 mallards got up out of a slough and me and Brooks looked at each other and said, we gotta have it. We had a, a long list of plans, you know, ideas, things we wanted to get done uh, before this season, but in typical fashion, the Mississippi River stayed high all summer, late into the summer, uh, so we couldn't get in and do some of the things we wanted to do. We would have liked to have planted some food. That wasn't, you know, possible. Uh, we wanted to build a camp, and uh, we started doing that here a couple weeks ago, and we're hoping by, you know, Christmas this year, we'll have a nice warm place to stay. When, the, when it finally did fall, we knew we had to get it in high gear because we had limited time to get it done, so uh, it was all hands on deck. We were calling everybody we knew to come help. We were having to barge materials across. You don't realize how much material is in a house until you have to bring every piece over by boat. You know, so the island's about 1,200 acres. What is normally flooded is about 300 acres. Uh, so you got 300 acres of flooded willow trees, and um, they're not oak trees, but the ducks come in there just the same.
Well, here, here on the island, uh, I personally consider myself a land manager, but uh, you know, Brooks and Harrison probably consider me just the help, and, uh, and, and that's fine. You know, I enjoy it. Uh, we worked all summer. Uh, youth season's coming up next weekend, and all there is left to do now is just shoot some ducks.